Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Knowledge Bolide Hangout for July 7th, 2021. Um, so with that comes a lot of comments, and I wanted to respond to a lot of comments all at once. So if you will bear with me, I will give you a little bit of information that will clear up a lot of comments that I'm not going to cut and paste to a million people. All right, so we are having our 57th Hangout in a row. And let's see what we got going on. It's official, guys. Yeah, Winchcomb. hit the med ball. Ooh. Uh. Winchcomb is official. It finally hit the met bull. <clears throat> Anybody else? Uh, oh, it's not Winchcomb, is it? Oh. Oh. Wow. One of the lucky oh few. God. Wow. So, but... We want to check in right now with uh, Damian, uh, our Croatian crew member. And we, we know that Damian does phenomenal photography. Here we can see pure cut surface reflectivity, clearly showing metal flakes and polished silicates. <laughs> the surface looks completely different in cross-polarized light this time showing only the surface color without reflectivity information of this meteorite and for that reason it's certainly one of the most valued specimens in my collection cross polarized light really boosts the contrast on carbonaceous chondrites mentions this on every hangout <clears throat> and we talk about cross polarized lighting and what you're seeing here is the meteorite slice and looking directly down at it with your eye. And every photon that's bouncing around off of the metal and off of the silica is bouncing into your eye. Once you align the, the light, so you, so you get none of the reflective light, you get all that polarized out this is what you're left with yeah yeah there you go. oh yeah it's it's my first palisite it's beautiful. beautiful yeah wow you you die station 49.34 grams oh, okay. it's a iron iad ungrouped this slice was actually in my personal collection yeah and i got lost in this one many a time it, it's just so complex. There's it is so very. much going on in there. It is a brand new meteorite for me, and it is a main mass. And even more importantly, it's a personal find of a friend of the Knowledge Bolide. But yeah, so that's um, 3.7 kilos, something like that. Is that the main mass? Yeah, this this is this is the main mass. The problem with using those types of meteorites in jewelry, though, is that they contain iron in the metallic state, and iron rusts like crazy, whether it's from from sweat from your hands uh, or just from exposure to a high humidity environment. Uh, oh, 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 nice! And what's right on time. Is Perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hold on, let me take it out of the box. Okay. <clears throat> and that spins, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You know, there's nothing out there. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's quite beautiful. I want to also point out that it is the first uh, meteorite in 30 years in the UK. Uh, and then there are. Oh, wait on eBay. There's so many of them. <laughs> well, uh, there are. <laughs> 23 now this number needs to be updated but there's 23 known british meteorites uk meteorites and they're listed there and i just thought this information was really interesting to look at if you look at this column over here fall all of these are confirmed falls wow. starting back in 1623 all the way to 2021 wenchcombe of the 23 documented uh, meteorites, only four of them were found. The other ones were witnessed and hunted for. 
The only uh, question is uh, how much matrix there is, which could push it to an LL4, but uh, LL3s and LL4s are both still quite good. That that's a beauty. Uh, well, and when you look at when you look at this under um, magnification, um, the even the matrix parts have chondrules in them. That's what you want. Yeah. Uh, they're just they're just smaller chondrules. Uh, ooh, you even got one with a dark inclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost That's... like when you look at that one up close, it almost looks carbonaceous. Yeah, <laughs> it, pro it probably is carbonaceous. So I wanted to pop out this box today. Cool. Rudy's. <laughs> so um a little background, which I found neat, and I only figured this out today reading some uh, some abstracts. Uh, the Rumor Rudies weren't always the Rumor Rudies. Um, hmm. Before they were officially classified as as the Rumor Rutites, named after Rumor Rudy, which fell in, in Kenya in 1934, uh, there were enough of them sitting around that they were calling uh, the Carl Lake uh, type meteorites because there was a little. <laughs> Australian find called Carl Carlisle Lake. You got stuff like uh, there are anomalous ones. So this is the only R4 anomalous uh, out there. So it's a one of one. Uh, and it's uh, Sierra Gorda. That's a pretty cool one. Um, you get uh, other ones that are also non brecciated So there's my R5. Got a R6 in there, which uh, rounds out. Uh, all those along with an R4. There's an R4 in here somewhere. There we go. 3.9, which is also a, a one of four. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm missing I'm missing two. There's an R3.4 and there's an R3.7. And those are, uh, you know, I've yet to run across those yet. You know, uh, I'm probably just as likely to find a real piece of uh, Allen Hills 8401 <laughs> as I will, will get in those. Okay, let's see. It's got good the one from Serpent Mound's got really good phosphor I mean fluorescence, but let's see how it does. I turn it off. Oh really good. Really good afterglow. That's wild. So that's with yep. the short Ooh. short wave UV. Try it again. Short wave. Well, that's really nice. And at, at uh UV is in the, the short end of the of the spectra or the high energy end of the spectra and so when you couple in light at, at uh, a uv frequency you excite something in the rock it down converts the light to a different color and sends it out the um, phosphorescence where it glows in the dark for a while afterwards it it uh, energizes that an intermediate state and that intermediate state has a storage function to it, and it takes a little while longer for it to bleed off. But that that's really quite beautiful. A nice, or yeah, maybe last week. Armored chondrules in there, and a vesicles vein of deep, deep dark black melt possibly there. Anybody yeah. remember what it is? Mm. Um. Whoa. 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 Like yeah. just it it goes all the way through. Oh, oh nice, nice. Topher, Topher knows which slice he wants. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> holy macadamia nuts. Yeah, and and I posted a video online. These now this is better than most pictures you see online, right? So yeah. I want to show people how hard it is to identify a possible meteorite or meteor wrong. Um, based on pure looks alone. Mm -hmm. Do we have any opinions? On this, Julie, I'll say it's a meteor wrong. Yeah, a meteor wrong. Okay. So pretty much the consensus is it would be pitched over the fence, right? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. What Ooh. is it? It is being classified currently, but this is another example of my, of my very um, cheap, because it doesn't exist, polarized, cross-polarized. See how you have reflective light, and then you can actually look inside and see it when there's no reflection. Uh -huh. 
It's because there are a lot of people out there who try to take advantage of people. <clears throat> and eBay is one of the places they use, unfortunately. Um, this is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Apollo 17 fragment. Yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is from an eBay listing right here. You can actually see that they put in the entire chemical breakdown of it. Well, it took me less than seven minutes to find out the exact meteorite they copied it from. It is a 61 gram Antarctic lunar. Oh. And it matches their chemistry identically. When I asked oh. what lab performed the test, they discontinued uh, any communication. <clears throat> this is on eBay right now. The nice green oh. one, it looks like uh, malachite. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> malachite. Oh my nice, god. It's a nice piece of malachite. I mean, you know. yeah, that is so malachite. <laughs> Fibers, yeah. Malachite, yeah. We had a really unique, uh, great meeting today. We had a bunch of uh, people from Canada out of nowhere join us. So we had like the Canadian show today. I'm actually going to title this the Canadian Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey guys. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for coming. I, I really appreciate everyone's uh, time and, and, and adding their knowledge to the Knowledge Bowl. Thanks a lot, guys. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. week.